All right, Shalom, Shalom, Rastafari, Shalom Tanat, Aina Yisraelim. Now, the last message that we put up, that we posted, was um, the Rastafari um, Tisha B'Av, a revelation that um, has come to us. It probably also has come to many of you all as well. If it hasn't, we spoke a word on it. It's just like this time, this time, this day, we're about to, it's, um, it's almost evening. You know, so it's almost evening here in, 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 in the West, right, in, in the North Country, the country of our um, captivity or exile, so-called Americaca, right? And it's, so it's almost um, the evening. So the evening would be the end of this particular uh, fast, right, a fast for Tisha B'Av. It's not one of the, um, the holy days in the sense of the commanded holy days, which are seven but break down into three um, particular seasons, three particular seasons. And it's very important for us who are coming out of Babylon to really recognize what is the order of the King of Kings and his Christ for his people. You understand? For his people. And we're speaking of Beta Israel. We're speaking of we as the once lost but now found sheep of the house of Israel. Now it says that we shall have a new name and we know that prophetically in Ras Tefari. But what we want to touch on a little bit more is this particular point and then also to deal with the double portion. There's a double portion. And the double portion is when we have two sabbatical readings. But then there's something else about this whole double portion that's very important for us to recognize. And that is that in addition to um, Maasai, or actually Matot, tribes, right? Tribes is the first Torah portion reading and feeding. And then we have um, Maasai, Maasai or Maasai, Maasai, or Yeh, the Ain and the, and, the, and, the, and the Yad or the Yod, which Bamarinya in the Ethiopic is Yemen, a Y sound. So, you know, we can speak about those linguistic details. Right, but from the Hebraic, these two are called the code word, the code name for 40, 40, um, 2 and 43 is Matot, which is tribes, and is um, Masay or Masae, which means um, journey. Now, Bamarinya in the Amharic of the Metzhav Kedus, mm hmm. In the Amharic of the Metzhav Kedus of Negus and Neges, we have, okay, here we go right here, we have, um, we have the two names now for tribes is Negadoch. We touched on this already, and some of you all are familiar with this. Moa'an Bes is the Emma Negeda Yehuda. In other words, the, the um, Moa'an Bes the Em Negeda Yehuda, the conquering line of the Neged or the Negede, the tribe of Judah. Now, in the diaspora, the so called African American or the Negro, the so called Negro, Negro blacks and coloreds, you understand, and those in this particular region of the diaspora come under the jurisdiction of Judah within this prophetic un unfolding of prophecy. But there's some other details that we need to touch on because often I've been asked concerning tribes. Now, that point about we have no king but Kaiser Borgia or Caesar Borgia is a very interesting point, and it does connect very intimately with 70 AD, which was the final, we can say, um, dispersion, you understand, from the, from the last remnant, the beachhead, in other words, of our promised land because of the disobedience, you understand, because of the idolatry. But it's interesting. If you study about the Babylonian captivity, which was the first time when the Temple of Solomon was destroyed in about 586, 586 B.C., most of us would think, and many of our brothers and sisters and and those who study Torah and study the scriptures and Bible studies and recognize their identity in, um, in um, the Bible and the scriptures as Beta Israel, because there's different groups of Israelites. And we really need to understand um, what the Almighty is revealing to us in that word. We have our 
centrist ones or the ones who are more moderate. And then we also have the, the, the right wing, you understand, of I and I movement, like the black Hebrew Israelites, they're more like the right wing, or some will call them the fanatical or the fundamental. But in my father's house, there are many mansions. You understand, and we also appeal to them, although there are differences. They might not accept Ethiopia because they're stuck on some verses in the scripture, and they're ignorant or ignoring the full interpretation of other verses, as well as perhaps other information, as we all are learning more and more with this prophecy of Donnell being fulfilled. In other words, um, they shall go to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. In other words, with the internet and the and the modem modulation, demodulation, that's another way of explaining they shall go to and fro. So we have technology where we're able to, to share information. You understand at the so-called speed of light or instantaneously, you understand, and a lot of books that were um, unavailable in the secret archives of um, uh, libraries and, and, and universities and other places and private collections, many of these are coming online again. You understand? Many, many of these are coming online again. So for those of us who are seeking, you understand, who have been asking and seeking, now we can really knock on those doors and much opens up to us. So we have to recognize that. So in the different camps of Beta Israel, because this is speaking to tribes, let, let us um, begin to document this. Um, let us get I and I I and I marker, or see which marker we're going to utilize. Might utilize the 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 black, right? Or the blue. We like the blue. You understand the blue, the blue and white. Those are our colors. Those are actually the priestical colors. So when you see this, the modern state of um, um, Jezreel, prophetically it's Jezreel. You understand? Because there's a sewing going on. But it's called the modern state of Israel, which is mostly run, ruled, directed, operated, and, quote, owned in this world system by um, the European, you'll say majority of European Jews. And only begrudgingly have they even somewhat opened up to the, the ethnic Hebrews, the black Hebrews, both from Ethiopia as well as from the West. And the African Israelites of Jerusalem, the community that is that that is um, led and guided by our brother um, Ben Ami Ben Kart uh, Ben Ami Ben Israel, he he already cast I think cast off the old um, slave master's name as many of us also need to do in proper time and with proper knowledge. There's an article up there that said that basically they don't they don't regard or they don't have they don't recognize Tisha B'Av as a holy day. I'm sure they recognize um, the results of Tisha B'Av. Because Tisha B'Av is a, it's a memorial. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a memorial, it's a remembrance. But it's, what does this mean to us in this prophetic time? And the fact that 2012, it's, it's now in 2012 that we have this double portion coinciding. So let's look this up for this week's Torah portion of study. The RSS is for Rastafari Sabbath study or sabbatical scrolls, if you please, right? But it's to study these scrolls, number um, 42 to 43, right? 42 and 43. As we mentioned already, we'll mention again, all right? As we mentioned already, we'll mention again this Negadoge, um, which is Matot and Guzo, Guzo Bamarinya. And Guzo, some of you may be familiar with that word Guzo, it means journey. It means journey. In other words, a journey. Because we're going to find out that in this portion, Torah portion, the, a new generation, an old generation, has passed away. You know what I'm saying? An old generation has passed away. Um, those people whom, whom the scripture says that in the book of uh, Epistle of Hebrews, that um, because of unbelief, because of lack of faith, you know, and they had faith, you know, they, they believed what they believed, or they accepted as true what they accepted as true, but they did not accept Jah's word or those whom Jah has sent to them. And I think there's a, there's a very, very important point that we have to recognize. In fact, even this particular booklet right here 
You always saying, let's get some light. Burhan Yuhun. All right. Okay, this book on Malaku. Malaku. All right, a compilation right here as well as giving a, a, a brief, right, a brief timeline. A brief timeline. Um, this particular book, we're going to go into a little bit more, but right here, um, we say also contained this small book, a a first in an expected series is the half of the story that has largely remained suppressed, distorted, and generally untold. You understand? Know and this is a very important message to Judah or the so-called Afro-American. You understand? Know the so-called African-American, the, the lost sheep in the North Country. You understand? Know the lost sheep in the North Country, and especially to even I and I Rastafari brothers and sisters who also are of the afro Afro American stock. This does not exclude anyone. You understand? We're not we don't play that sort of game that some of the tribes have done. You understand? This does not make I and I superior to any other tribes. It's really to whom more is given, you know it? Do you know it? To whom more is given, more is required, more is expected. You understand? So this particular book is crucial because this is this in our Overstanding is that angel, in other words, symbolic of that messenger. You understand? Uh, uh, this messenger, Melaku, even his name means messenger. You understand? And many have rejected his testimony for the testimony of a slanderer or one who, a John the Baptist who got offended, i.e., Marcus Messiah Garvey. And we have to say that there's some tribalism in this. For, for the rejection of Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. But then, at the same time, many of our fathers, mothers, foreparents, I'm speaking to the lost sheep in North America on this particular issue pointedly, speaking to Afro-Americans, you understand, or Africans in the, American, and in the, in the Americas. A lot of you brothers and, and, and sisters know, some of y'all we've reasoned personally on, and we've spoken about this issue. You understand, we've spoken about this particular issue. So we wanted to touch on this as well, and we have, and y'all will, and we will. Now, along with this message, this, is this particular book here, Tribes, we pointed to this um, already, Tribes, because this is what this Torah portion is really all about, Tribes. It's called Matot, 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 if you, if you will, Matot. Matot or Matot, if you contract it, you understand? It's just a linguistic situation right there. Different people speak differently, you understand? And we can get into some of that between the Hebrew and the Amharic and the Ethiopic. But all those languages, Hebrew, Amharic, um, Ethiopic, or Gutas, are Afro-Semitic or Afro-Semitic languages. So if you would even study that, you'll recognize that we as um, black people, there's more to our story than we have been told. This book is also very important, and hopefully we'll, we'll make some quotes from it. This is by Joel Kotkin right here, Joel Kotkin. But I think it's really significant, and I didn't really um, think beforehand to mention this, but in, in the first part, Josh showed me the book on the side, and he said, remember, that's tribes. You're speaking about tribes. You remember that this book we talked about previously, if you look it up, either at our website or on the internet for our YouTube, you might find that vid where we sp spoke about this book. You'll see how significant and how important, because basically what it says is how race, right, how race, and we know that race is the seed. We've been speaking on the seed, what the word seed means. You'll know see even the seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. This didn't go Maria. Yovas and man shall say, you understand, that Zion is our mother. You understand, we speak about the African Sion, right? We speak about the African Zion. Yovas, as well as, right, as well as when we speak about, when we speak about this then then Gamarian. You understand, now, there's been a lot of whitewash going on. You understand, that's part of the curse of the Borg. The Borg. You remember Star Wars? The Borg. You know what I'm Ones have been assimilated into so-called white supremacy. And white supremacy is nothing but the, the, the hate of Diablos, of Satan, 
deceiving white people. You understand? I mean, think about it. White supremacy. I mean, think about it scientifically. You understand? It is an affront to God and to man. So even there, Satan has deceived white people. Satan doesn't love anyone, especially humanity. You understand? He especially hates the original man. You understand? Let's put this up here for a moment. He especially hates the original, the original man or the black man, the Adamite. You understand? He especially hates the Adamite. But even other races, he hates humanity. This is why he fights against the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. This is why he fights against righteousness. This is why he fights you understand, against humanity. And he's using and been using humanity to destroy itself. So one's are playing this little, like, kind of blame game, you know what I'm saying? And even we as Beta Israel, as once lost but now found, we also get caught up in that. Oh, the white man did. The white man stole our heritage. He stole our legacy. Is that really true from a true scriptural and historical perspective? It's not. You know what I'm saying? I was with a, a sister about that as well, that the, Afro, the Afrocentrics, you, you see, they, they got it wrong. And people want to say, well, how they got it wrong? They don't have it all wrong, but some key things they have wrong, some, some key facts they have wrong. I mean, think about this for a moment. If ones can say, well, Jesus is black too, Jesus is black, and Moses is black, and all. So other folks believe and have whitewashed them as white, and look what they have been able to achieve. Look at their, their group unity, their group dynamic. And so if we know those things and we fail to walk in them, we are still walking in the curse. You know what I'm saying? We are walking in the curse and not in the blessedness. But an interesting point about the Babylonian captivity circa 586 B.C. that you'll find, excuse me, that you'll find B.C. is that John says in his word, I'm going to find the scripture. He says, because the Sabbath, because his Sabbath, because the land did not enjoy the Shabbat, the Sabbath, the sabbatical rest, you understand? Therefore, he would number those days. And he says something very interesting. He says 70, you understand, about 70 years. And roughly that was more or less the time and space of that Babylonian um, captivity to the time of, of Israel and um, Nehemiah, or Nehemiah, you understand what we read about in the book of Ezra, and Nehemiah, and there's also the apocryphal of Ezra as well. That's very, very important. The apocryphal of Ezra, you know, really speaks about the end of this time-space dispensation or the end of this age. It says that the end of this age will be like when um, Esau and Jacob, Yaakov, were born. Now, we know these are two brothers, but then we also see the racial dynamics also there as the black Hebrew Israelites will give you a basic um, kindergarten, a foundational lesson, and we need to take that to heart because there's much there, but we also need to continue to grow. You know what I'm saying? Continue to grow to where Yah, where Jah, where Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, where Hashem wants us to be in spirit and in truth and in and through our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Moshiach, Yeshua. All right? So, on that particular point, we, we're going to move further and move, move on, all right? And we talked about Caesar Bogiers, and you notice this right here, this particular CD right here, uh, I mean DVD. Uh, my name is Caesar Bogiers. You see they have him with holding a picture of himself. You know what I'm saying? In other words, the, the European or the white Jesus or the pop, of, the pop Jesus. Remember, it says that Satan has deceived the entire world. Because when anybody sees this image, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, that's Jesus. No, that's Caesar Bogiers, 1492. See that date, 1492. Make sure you get a clear on that date right there, 1492. Now, why is that important, and how does that connect with Tisha B'Av? What is the connection? All right, so this in Gilmani, I'm going to need more space right here. So we'll put this over here. Let us put down the, the two names. We're going to just put them together. One is Ma Tot, right? Ma Tot, right? And Ma Se. Okay. Ma Tot and Ma Se. All right. There we go. Ma Tot and Ma Se. All right. I guess I put too much pressure on that right there. 
All right, so we put this down for a moment, you know, because there is a sword, there is a judgment, you know what I mean? You know, but the sword is the word of God, but he does not, he does not leave us, you know, vulnerable in covenant, because you're going to learn something in this particular portion. Okay, it's this up here. All right. All right, so we, we continue to move forward with this. Should we put this here again? Should we try to balance it off better? All right. Let's see if it's balanced. All right. It might not be balanced. No. Okay, well, here's what we do. We'll, we'll put this down. We'll, we'll find a place for it. Oh, we, we have a place for it, you know. But anyway, be that as man, let's get into this Torah portion. Because he's going to speak about when the people come out, they have to be armed. You know, one's one, well, why did you, why, why are you having that up there, yo? You know what I'm saying? Why not? It's not against your law. You understand? But um, be that as it may, let us get into this particular, this particular Torah portion. Let's see, is this, is this balance here? Okay, this particular Torah portion. Okay, this is a little better. Okay, that's, that's, that's a little better right there. All right. This particular Torah portion. So where, where we're going to begin from, we're going to begin from our study notes right here in the Midbar, right? The Midbar, the Hebrew book of Numbers, right? And this is volume four. So we're ending on the study of volume four. You understand the study of volume four? We're going to begin um, in about uh, a so-called uh, week or so, a summit or so. We're going to begin the study of book five, right? Book five. Right, book five right there, right, which is Devarim, right, or the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy. But there's some important things that we learn in this particular Torah portion, right, in this particular Torah portion. So let's go over the basics. So first of all, first of all, we have vows. These are five areas. Vows, vengeance on Median, cleansing from Bacchal, dividing the booty, and fifthly is the land for the Reubenites and the Gadites. And I think there's a very interesting connection right there with us, um, we, the black people, vis-a-vis -vis, um, Ethiopian World Federation as an organization and the principle of that, that form of government, as well as with the land grant. You understand? And the fact that there is a, a Jamaican sefer or a settlement but there is no Afro-American sefer or settlement on that land. Now, this is very interesting because we're going to see something like that. The, the, the Reubenites and the Gadites, in a sense, did something similar. You know what I'm saying? And this Torah portion, when we were going over it, and was, it was like, why does that sound so familiar? Because that's exactly, first of all, who we are, where we've been, and we still have, this speaks, this is our wisdom. John says that Torah is I and I wisdom. All right, so let's deal with vows, the first part on vows, right, on vows. So as we was going to touch on previously, let us get the Metaf Kedus, Yovasan, let us get the Book of the Seven Seals right here, and let us go to chapter, all right, let's go to chapter, chapter 30, right, chapter 30, and let's deal with the first five or so verses the first five or so verses. And now there's a, there's a comparison with that with, Mark, with Matthew in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 to verse 37. Make a note of that. If you have a Schofield or if you go to our website, um, lojsociety.org, you can actually go to the study page and you can download that and use it on your mobile or your you know, whatever device, whatever way you, 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 you can study it on your digital device, so forth and so on. But it's recommended that one gets a hard copy, you understand, of, of, of this version of it. This is the original version, the Schofield Study Bible. They have new ones with New King James, you know, New King James English, so forth and so on. Um, we don't recommend that, but if you have one, it's still good to study with it. But this is ideal. So in other words, it's like school. It's like class. You have to get a certain type of book that'll tell you which edition, so forth and so on, if you want to be on the same page, in other words. So we made available the digital free download, and one should at least make an investment in acquiring a good um, B-I-B-L-E, a good English 
um, Bible, King James, and in particular the Schofield Reference Bible. So, the Sama'ab, or what is what men says to produce, a Hadu Amlak. Now, this portion contains the law of vows. Now, let's remember this. Let's always keep this in mind. The Old Testament, right, the Belui Kidan Bamarinya, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, right, concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed or in revelation, all right, because revelation, it reveals the truth. The law came by way of Moses, Mashu, you know what I'm saying, M Moshe, you know what I'm saying, but grace and truth, notice what came through Yeshua HaMashiach, grace and truth came through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is very, very important for us to recognize. This is not to say forget about the Old Testament, because we'll, we can note to you right from the scripture that after the crucifixion and death and ascension, at, oh, oh, not ascension, but before the ascension, after the crucifixion, the death, where he laid down his life. Another point is that Christ, Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, was not murdered. Now, I might have said this, you know, and, you know, we get zealous, and, and that was maybe generally, seemingly true. But as we've studied the word and the testimony of his majesty, Yeshua HaMoshiach was not murdered. He said, I lay down my life, no man take it from me. So how can he be murdered? You know what I'm saying? Maybe Caesar Borgias was murdered. You know what I'm saying? But our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Caesar was murdered. You know what I mean? We know about Caesar, that whole thing right there. But Gaetachin Jesus Christos, the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, and let's get a, let's get a placeholder, you know what I'm saying? Yeshua HaMoshiach, he was not murdered, right? He laid down his life. He willingly laid down his life. Let, let's overstand that. Otherwise, we are hypocrites to both the teaching of his majesty, the word of the king of kings, and the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, the Mitzhaf Kedus. You know so even in the English translation, that basic translation basically there is right and exact. You know what Some little nuances, but nothing that takes away from the basic meaning of the word in that particular area of scripture. So let's just understand that. So when we're reading this right here, Law of Vows, right, we must compare it with Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 to 37. Now, something interesting, I just looked at this right here in our chart right here, and I had to say hallelujah, because actually if you look at the third column over here, you know what saying, which is the New Testament, you know what I'm saying, which is the, the birth Hadasha, you will see it over there as well. You will see that that's the, that's the reference there as well. So let's do this first. Let us go to Matthew, right? Matthew chapter, chapter five, right? Let's take the veil off of our eyes, so we won't be like the, you know, like the Israelites who were willingly blind, like many of the Israelites who still are willingly blind to the good news of Christ in His kingly character. So chapter five, verse thirty-three to verse thirty-seven. Now, there's a whole section there on Yeshua and divorce, if you're looking there, but we're just going to stick to these verses here. It says, again, again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of the Kedem, by them of old time, by old timers have said, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform to the Lord to Adonai thine oaths. But I say to you, but who said to us? Yeshua HaMoshiach. And who is Yeshua HaMoshiach to us in God's sight? He is that grace and that truth. He says to us what? He says, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem or Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. It is the city of the great Negush, of the great king. It, verse 36, neither shalt thou swear by thy head. Don't swear by your Rastafari. You know Because thou canst not make one here white or black. Wow. He didn't say he can't do it, but he said because we can't. Why are you swearing? 
You know what I'm saying? Your swearing is meaningless. But here's Lisa in verse 37. And we've been, in spirit, we've been teaching on this, and it's so beautiful to see that this is actually a lesson, you know what I'm saying, that has come up right around the time that we've been talking and, and, and ministering to different brothers and sisters on this whole thing about double-mindedness, pruning our words, checking out what we're saying. Like a lot of times we'd be saying, oh, I love this. Oh, I love that. And we have to watch that. Because when we say we love all these little things, then when we say love Ja, I mean, come on now. You know, do you love your job a little bit more than you love your car or your or your or your things? You have to check it out. You know, saying you can say you like it. You know, but you have to prune your words. You will have to meditate because the word is so very important. Um, James tells us about the importance of the word. You know, saying breaking the curse. You know, saying is all about that word. Covenant itself, the al kidan itself, it means the word covenant, the word that covers certain activity or certain relationship, the al-kidan, right? Or in the Hebrew, the benai berit, right? It says, let, it says, but let, but make your communication be. How should our communication be? Yea, yea, awo, 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 or nay, nay, idelem, idelem, no, no. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. You know what I'm saying? Cometh of kufu. Now, what's interesting about that particular verse right there, my brothers and sisters, is that I've, I've, I've read that before. I'm sure you have read it or heard it read before, too. And you think, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's right. That's, that's Christ says that. That's red letters. That's Christ speaking. So there's no, there's no over a doubt, but you have to meditate upon these things. Remember, meditate the word. Remember Psalm 1? He will meditate upon the word. So first you have to learn the word. You understand? And we went through those kind of steps. So you have to hear the word, then you got to read the word, then you got to study the word, then you have to memorize the word, commit it to your memory. That's loving him with all your heart. The heart is the consciousness. You have to write it. Even David says, I have, how he's put his word in him. David even says, King David says, I have hid your word in me so I don't sin against you. You see, a lot of times we be messing up because we don't have... We're not investing. We're not putting it in us. So when we get in those situations, when we're, when we're in a temptation situation, if we had invested, if we had the Word of God in us, His Holy Spirit can, can move on those waters. And then we'll be like, oh, chant. You, you start to remember that and say, nah, you know, because it, 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 will, it, will, it will school you and rule you. You know what I'm saying? And even the idea about self control, you know, people say once you have self control, when you study in the scripture, self control. It's really a gift. You know, that's why they, they, people are doing all these programs. and other, But it's really a kind of a gift of God. It's a byproduct, you know what I'm saying, of a certain way of life, of a certain orientation. You know what I'm saying, an orientation. But be that as it may, um, so I had, you know, I, I read this, and I was saying, um, that last line right there. Did, did you check out that last line or the, or the last verse? It says, but let your communication be yay, yay, semicolon, right? Nay, comma, nay, and then it has a colon. Now, the colon is going to explain now, clarify this, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. This is not the main point of I and I lecture, but the Holy Spirit says it's important to share this. This, this will probably help some of the brothers and sisters. And I and I hope it does because getting this overstanding has helped I and I too, right? Because we talk about the spirituality. You know what I'm saying? It is a spirituality. But then his master that what religion's purpose is. You know what I'm saying? Religion purpose in that sense of quote religion is to lay down a basic structure. Now we have to live in that. People say, Well, I don't do religion, I do a spirituality. On what spirit? You mean the spirit of the world that you was born into? When did you ever get that structure now to live in? In. You know, so the structure of this, it says, yay, yay, you know, make your yes, yes, and no, no. Now, you have to compare that, if you will, with um, James, the epistle, to, uh, the epistle of James, of Yaakov, of Jacob, right, brother of Adoni, brother of Geta, brother of the Lord, where in James chapter 1, he is speaking to us, and let's just go there, let's not paraphrase it. We don't have to paraphrase it right now. We can we can go here, you understand, and, and share it, you know, and share it with the eye. The item the item good. You understand in the King of Kings? Alright, so let's go forward. 
All right. Um, anyone that, you know, if you, it, hopefully I don't want to speak to anyone who doesn't. I want to speak to those who do. Those who don't get it, you know, hopefully maybe they'll get it before it's too late. But in James, right, in James, the general epistle of James, and we went through this in the, in, in, in the reasoning on John's people um, destined to reign. We dealt with this, this wisdom, you know, saying how the wisdom helps us in the overcoming. Right now, James chapter 1, it says the testing of faith. You know how when David stood up against Goliath, or he was about to go to stand up against Goliath because he heard Goliath insulting the God of Israel and he wanted to take that uncircumcised Philistine's head off? You know, right? he, he's still a shepherd. Some say he was a boy, but he was a young man, a shepherd. He wasn't like his brothers. His brothers were, 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 were a bad boy. You know what I'm saying? His brothers were a rude boy. You know what I'm saying? His brothers were, you know, gunman. You know what I'm saying? His brothers were soldier. You know what I'm saying? Warrior. You know, his brothers were experienced ones. But remember, all of Israel was kind of in a frozen psychological state. That's like kind of I and I. So it was only David, you know what I'm saying? When he heard this, you know, he, he was ready to deal with this, this giant. He didn't care how big the giant was or how, how big his sword or his his his, his um, um the spear or, or his his armor or his armor bearer or he didn't care what kind of boots he had on or what kind of you know coat of mail he was wearing you know he didn't care about any of that he trusted in Jah right now something's interesting about David's the wisdom that was in David's heart because Saul who was the king oh Benjamite right Saul was a Benjamite first king of Israel now Saul wasn't a bad king you understand at first. You understand? But, but as the Lord said, when he was small in his own sight, before he got big boat, yeah. You understand? Benjamin. You know how Benjamin connect with Jamaica and the Caribbean and I and I, brothers and sisters from that region, that part of the diaspora, right? You know, um, and David, you understand? David was a, 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 a Judahite. So we can see that dynamic even in Rastafari. You understand in Rastafari between so-called Afro-American, the African-American, the so-called, what do you call I and I? Yankee. Between the Yankee and the Yadi. Yankee and Yadi, right? That, that kind of difference. That's the difference between uh, Judah and Benjamin. But when Saul was first chosen king, right, he was good. In other words, he was, he was the Lord could, Jack could work with him because he was still small in his own eyesight. When the prophet Samuel came to um, 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 anoint him, he was hiding among a bunch of things. He was like hiding out. He, he, he basically didn't want that. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was very humble and everything, right? But then he started to get big boy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then he started to get bossy. You know what I'm saying? And all the other expressions that you know basically mean that. Anyway, Saul tried to put his armor, he tried to put his armor on Dawit. He tried to put his own armor on David. So David, you know, he put it on and stuff like that and so on. And, 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 and David eventually said, no, nah, I ain't, I ain't going to go with this. Now, just think about that for a moment. Of all those hardened warriors and everything else, they were at like a stalemate. You know what I'm saying? Basically, the Philistines, they were putting down a bet and said, listen, um, y'all have someone fight Goliath. And whoever wins in this will win the day. We, we, we can just chill from there. You know what I'm saying? We can go back. If we win, we can brag. You can go back to your people and brag. We don't all have to fight this out. We can have a little, like, like this is our boxer. You bring your boxer. It's not like a sports thing, like what's going on now. So it was like a sports competition. You know what I'm saying? Instead of both fighting, like this is what countries do today. Instead of the countries actually fighting each other, they engage in sports. You know what I'm saying? And competition and soccer or something else like that. And, you know, even though a lot of the countries still want to fight each other, they allow it to go to the arena. So here the Philistines set this up, right? Basically said, listen, we have, this is our champion right here. You send a champion. You send anybody. You know what I'm saying? And maybe since he's a giant, you'll send one of the hybrids, you know, we'll send from the old world or remnant of that seed, you know, um, why don't you, you could send two people out, whatever. None of the Israelites wanted to take that on. None of, none of the bad boy, you understand, none of the warrior, none of the gangsters wanted to take that one on, right? But David basically did. 
But here's the key thing about David's wisdom. David said, listen, Saul and King Saul or whatever, he said to him basically, he said, listen, um, I can't wear your armor. And he must have thought he was crazy. You, you, I mean, you don't want, want to wear the king's full body armor? He said, nah. He said, because I haven't, here's the wisdom, wait for it, wait for it, because I haven't tested it. He said, I haven't tested it. I mean, I mean you could imagine. I mean, you don't want to use somebody else's tools or equipment unless you can test it. You understand? I mean, if you do, notice where David's trust was. David's trust wasn't in his shield, his buckler, his sword, his helmet, or whatever. Well, he didn't have that, but it wasn't in somebody else's. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't trust somebody else's thing. And who knows how it actually fit, you know, really on him. So the point I made by <laughs> that little interlude, you know, that, that, that Rastafari revelation interview, in, inter, interlude, you understand, um, was to point out James right here where it says that the testings of faith, the testings of faith, and the purpose of testing, you understand, of testing, not testing somebody else. See, you have to try your own faith so that the spirit of wisdom and experience and wisdom will help you when you're looking at somebody else. Like Christ basically said, take the, take the beam out your eye so you can take a little speck out your brother's eye, basically, right? So let's get into this. Yaakov, we went over this before, but we'll go through this at a lively, hopefully, pace. It says, a servant of Ha Elohim, Hashem, of God, if you please, and of the Lord Adonai, Jesus Christ, or Adonai, Yeshua, HaMoshiach, to the 12 tribes, to who the 12 tribes, see how this connect with tribes? This, this is the first portion we want to... We want to touch on. So let's put this right here. This is this is this is the subject of it right here. We want to deal with this name tribes, right? Now the first part of it deals with a vow. You know what I'm saying? And it's interesting with vow because we also speak about vow, like the vow of a Nazarite. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to touch on that's the first part. But we want to touch on the name of this portion first. Tribe, you know, really tribes are mat 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 you know, or mat och in a sense tribes, all right, tribes, the different tribes, and namely, it's referring to the 12 tribes of Israel. We're not talking about the orientation, I mean, the, or the organization, we're talking about the orientation, you understand, we're not talking about the, the, just the organization, even though there are some best practices and procedures that we can learn from that, all right, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we can clarify some of the questions people ask us. Like, the way the 12 tribes do with tribes, is that the way we should do it? Some people have asked I and I that. Or what, what about the Hebrew Israelites, the way they deal with tribes, seems to make more sense to some people. Say, should we do it like that? Well, the Hebrew Israelites, the black Hebrew Israelites, mainly a Judahite, you could say organization, primarily because this come out Judah, deals with the 12 tribes in the sense of nationality where the lost sheep were scattered in the diaspora, and who is your father, to see whether you are a full tribe, half tribe, so forth and so on, on that national level. Nationality, very important, Yovis. Then, the 12 tribes of Israel, organization founded by um, Vernon uh, Carrington, a.k.a. the prophet Gad, may Jah have mercy on his soul, since he has passed on to the spirit world. Um, the way he dealt with it is like when we say, what's your sign? Really, in that sense, and there's a lot that we can learn from that. That's not our tribe as far as nationality, but that's our tribe within the family in the sense of what is your, what is your Israelite sign. You understand? Know in other words, under what particular uh, personality of the 12 tribes that you, you know, you come under or you were born under in that sense. And there's a lot of overstanding to that as well. So it can help us to kind of replace this uh, zodiac, you know understand, this uh, zodiac thing. You see, the zodiac thing is not bad, you know understand, in the sense of it's referring to the heavens, but it's the interpretation. Like I read, I think, Ice Cubes, something said that the white man, the devil gave you the Bible. No, the devil gave us his Bible or his interpretation of the Bible, his translation of the Bible, but the Israelites already did it when they said, we have no king but Kaiser, but Caesar, but Esau. You understand? And then Jah gave them exactly what they wanted. You understand? Gave them that. What's the time? 
1492. You see 1492 right there? Now, 1492, it was also on the Tisha B'Av that the black Jews, as well as the black um, 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 Moors, who are also Hebrews, coming from Ishmael, we come from Yaakov, Jacob, Yishak, Isaac, Sarah's son. They come from the other side of the family, Hagar, and so forth, and so on. But this is when, this is when the, the, the black Jews were, were, were expelled, right, were expelled, some even enslaved, expelled from Europe circa 1492 by King Ferdinand and, and, and Queen uh, Jezebel, I mean Isabel or, or Isabella, you understand? And that's very interesting that that also occurs, you understand, roughly circa vis-a-vis -vis that same period of time, and we're still speaking about this double portion, Tisha B'Av, and remember the Tisha B'Av, we have, we have the first temple, Solomon's temple, right? And then we have Herod's temple, which is also called Solomon's temple. And so both of them being destroyed on the very same day to really see that connection with this double portion. That's a double judgment. Now, that can't just be an accident. You know what I'm saying? And then if we study our story, we see other um, key times between this July and August time where there was destruction, you know what I'm saying, to the people, even dispersion, even captivity during that time. Now, um, that in itself, you understand, should make us go, hmm, and really meditate, study the basic facts, and try to find the truth in that for ourselves, you understand, both for the, 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 the people, all of us, and then even the individual, what we can learn from that individually, you understand, that can imp improve our behavior and our relationship as true children of God, as sons and daughters of Jah. Rastafari. Now, so the Torah tribes of Israel, which are scattered abroad. So even at this time, they were scattered abroad. That's why Christ said, I have not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? He says, greeting. Salamta. Greeting. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Now, first of all, one can always ask, and it's good to ask, be honest, you know, if you have this question, be honest. If your brother or sister can answer it, let them answer it. And if otherwise, ask John in the spirit of, 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 of Christ and in Christ and through Christ with faith, and he will answer you if you don't doubt, you know, if you're not doubtful and powerful and, and, and all the other things that he says that we should not be. He says, my brethren, he says, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Now, this is, this is, this is what they call it. When something is opposite or against, like, you know, the way we, you know, are, are taught, it's like the, the, people say this is against human nature. Who can joy when they're in temptation or tribulation? The righteous. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get that. Who can joy in temptation or which is when you fall into diverse temptation? See, it depends on where your first love is. See, if your first love is in Jah, you understand? If your first love is in Yeshua, you understand? And you fall short, you understand? Or you fall into certain temptations for Christ's sake, for John's sake. This is why you have to test yourself. You have to really, you know, really be honest. You remember, you have to be honest. The, 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 the keyest thing is not so what sin you have done or what this or what that or such and such. Because only a really, I mean, I mean, even murder could be forgiven, except according to John law. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about murder, right? Murderer has to be sent to the soul that they killed. Think about it for a moment. You know, that's why the Bible says we should suffer, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and suffering to repentance is good. When we look at ourselves and recognize, oh, man, I keep messing up, I keep doing that. Maybe we need to stay in that state of mind, you know what I'm saying, that have that to push us to stop doing it. You know what I'm saying? But it says suffer, but don't suffer as a murderer. You see, because a murderer got another soul. You understand? Got another soul to deal with. We're not talking about warrior or soldier. We're not talking about we as Kol Yish Royal. You understand? Protecting ourselves against the heathen and sheathen that are trying to stop us 
you understand, and stamp out our name so that the name of Israel and black Israel is no more in remembrance. We have divine right and authority to protect ourselves. And even your, your man-made law says the same thing. You understand? So let's, let's recognize that. All right? So it says, count it all joy. So this, this requires a, a change of mind, a change of perspective. You understand? In order to count it joy, I mean, even for I and I self, you know, I've practiced and I'm, I'm much better at it, but still I'm on the road in perfecting. You know what I'm saying? Because still sometimes you, you kind of fall a little short and then you have to remember. And then when you really think about it and really just let Jah be, let, let his, his, his presence be, you laugh. At, I mean, it's, it's, it's like funny because you're thinking like, wow, you're working yourselves up, you know what I'm saying, about some really nonsense. And sometimes in certain situations, you really have to let go, you know what I'm saying, let go of the ego. you got to let go of the you are holding that situation. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's go forward. It says knowing this. So that means we can count all joy knowing, not believing, not assuming, not pretending, not skylarking or faking, but you know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, that the trying of our faith, of our imminent, it worketh what? It worketh patience. You know, because a lot of our brothers and sisters have been reasoning saying, Ross, you know, um, you know, even they would say, Ross, you're real patient. I've had to work at it, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've had to have my faith tried and work at it, and still sometime, you know, but I always say to myself, no need to be impatient, but if you're impatient, you may end up as an outpatient, you know what I'm saying? So there's no need to be an inpa impatient, you know what I'm saying? Because um, patience is the faith of the, what is the faith of the saints? So I just want to look at this word right here. Um, what is it? Verse, uh, verse 3 right here. Let's go to verse three. Uh, when the moche hoy, ye imnetachu, mafetan te egistin, and dia darigalachu, aukachu, liu liu fetana, siya dars bachu, in the mulu desita, quitarut, quitarut. In other words, count it. And now it's interesting the word count is there because, you know, this is concluding numbers. We're concluding numbers. And from the very beginning, if you go forward to those vids, we talk about how numbers has to do with counting, counting the course, as well as accounting and accountability. You know what I'm saying? As accountability, so saying that one has to count this. So if one is not being accountable in the faith, they cannot really do what it says right here. They cannot count it joy. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't have the, they don't have the bait. They're not building on the foundation. They're trying to make some other foundation. You're not building on his righteousness. They don't recognize that our righteousness is not about what we do. You're saying about what we don't do. You're saying it's about our faith and our admittance in him who our father, whom Abba has sent, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? And his living word and his living testimony to I and I, his people. That's what our righteousness is about. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's recognize. There's too much of that self-righteousness, and we wonder, well, how come we are not, we need identity, we need love, and such and such. Well, well, first of all, you need to be obedient to the gospel. You know what I'm saying? That, plain and simple, period. The King of Kings says that, and I and I, I and I stand on that, and if necessary, I and I back, I and I sword on that. And, and maybe not even this sword. Do you understand? Because we're in a new type of warfare. But anyway, um, verse 3, it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, the trying of your faith it does what? It works patience. But, verse 4, let your patience, it says, let, excuse me, but let patience, let allow patience to have her perfect work that ye may be perfect. In other words, let patience have perfect work. The, her is italicized there. So you can read it as, but let patience have perfect work. A little key that I've tried to teach the, the, the Dekam as I'm ordered, the disciples and brothers and sisters, that when you read these verses, read them, right? But then try reading them without the italics. Because the italics sometimes are not there in, in, in the original and the pure version. So if you look at verse 3, it says, knowing this, knowing this. But if you take out that this, it would read, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, but let patience have 
perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, not lacking anything. Now, there's something very interesting about that. Let's just read this verse. To to Igishtim, Minam Yemiya Gwadalachu, Sainor, Fitu Manina, Milu An, Tehonu Zen, Sharawin Yifetsim, or Sharawin Yifetsim. We pronounce the Nugusu Se, or Nugusu She, as She. That's the difference between I and I and others. Though some critique it, you know, those who know, know that, that this pronunciation is true, especially with the holy. The old sense with the holy, you know, it's set apart. So we, this is why we will pronounce it. So tigist is normal, but here it uses nugusu se. So we say t e t e So we'll go into that detail right there. But it's interesting. It says wanting or lacking. Lacking nothing. You know, like the Psalm 23. In other words, the sustainer is my shepherd. You understand? No. I shall not want, or there will be nothing, in a sense, lacking to me. That's a very important idea because Satan runs this whole world system, and you can check it out for yourself. You probably already have. Um, hopefully you recognize what you're seeing, that they, you know, they always say, oh, you need this. You understand? Oh, you need to get this. If you get this, this will make you feel better. If you get this, you'll get that. And if you need to get this, they always play on this, you don't have this. You need to get this. Your life is going to change. You are lacking this. So Babylon, you understand, spends, uh, spends, uh, uh, a heavy investment, you understand, know on playing to that 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 immature feeling, you understand, and, and and turning that into almost like an animalistic nature, you understand. Know um, so notice what it says: patience, tigish, you understand, know must have her perfect work, or must have its perfect work. Now here it doesn't necessarily say. Um, I don't see in the language. Her, you understand, but we know that certain attributes are feminized in the language. You understand now in Egypt, and you know some of these things were projected in the feminine sense when that you know when ones wanted to make a teaching example. So they said, "Oh, this is the goddess." No, those are attributes right there. Recognize verse five. It says, "If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask of Egziyavi Her Lotu Subhat. Let him ask of." Ha Elohim Baruku that giveth to all it has men in italics liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him and it shall be given him or her Kanantagin Manam Tibab Bi Gwadlo Saya Nekif Be Ligisina Lehulu Yemisat Owen Xyabi Harin Yelemin and it will be given. Now, this, this is the key thing right here. This is the key. It says that if we're lacking, the best thing to do is to ask of Abhatachin. But we need to be in that relationship. That's why the repentance, that's why the rebirth, that's why the, the, it says Christ says that if any man would come after me or follow me, he must first deny himself, right? Pick up his cross. Right? And follow, you know what I'm saying? And follow I and learn, it says, learn of me. So one doesn't burn, you know what I'm saying, being alienated from thee, from the Most High. Verse 6, it says, but let him, here's the key right here, let him or allow him, in other words, may he act in faith. May he act in imminent. So notice what a lot of folks have a problem with. What does faith mean? And, and what do I believe? You know, see these words, see how the devil does it? He tw in, in the language, in the Hebrew, and even in the Septuagint, the word for faith and the word for um, belief, you understand, which is the root, really, of the word for trust in both languages are translated in a multitude of different funny ways. That's a part of Satan's operation, you understand, so that you won't, you won't really recognize 
really the root aspect. That's what we focus so much on trying to define what, 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 what faith means, or so-called the real word of belief in the Hebrew, and it comes to the Amen. The Amen. That's what we use as a reference point, Revelation 3 and 14, where Yeshua HaMushiach himself says that he is the Amen. You're the true and the faithful witness. So it's about truth. It's about faith. It's about bearing witness. And it's the beginning. He says he's the beginning of the creation of God. In other words, Africa awaits her what? Creators. <laughs> That's what his majesty teaches. Christ says that what, if you have faith in him, that what he does, you would do the same and even greater works. I mean, that's the real challenge right there. So, so, so he said to the standards high. These are really high standards, but they're reachable to us. Remember, patience. So let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, right? He says, let him ask, verse 6, may he ask in faith, nothing wavering, not wavering. You know, like, God, are you there? No, no remember, remember, it's, it's within. One has to go within. What I mean by within? The spirit of God, the spirit of life is found within you. So when we speak the words out, it's necessary for us to speak the words out because we release. You know what I'm saying? We release in this systemic matrix. It's like, it's like asking forgiveness. It's like, it's like speaking certain things out. It releases. Because whatever we bind on earth, right, we bind in heaven, or we loose on earth, we loose in heaven. And there's much that Christ explains to us. But the main thing here is not wavering. For he that wavereth, you know, as he was wavering, is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. And let, me, let me let you understand that. All the I and I. I, well, let me admit, myself, I've, I've gone through this where you, where, you, where you waver, you know, and I didn't, I didn't get Jack. I, I didn't get Jacob because I wasn't, I wasn't in the God of Jacob, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't get Jack, you know what I'm saying, when I was wavering, you know what I'm saying? Perhaps the Almighty had mercy, you know, but he was really under no obligation since it was like I'm speaking to him, like I'm wondering whether he even exists, you, you know what I mean, on a certain level. But the Almighty is able to show mercy with whom he will. But there's a principle that we're learning um, here, or if you please, a principle. So we have verses 5 and 6. It says, um, let's just catch up right here. He says, uh, Kanantagin. Oh, okay, I went through this, but let me just go forward. Kanantagin. Manam tiba bi guadalo. Sai nekes. Be legisina le hulu yemiset uwen exiaberina yelemin. Le arsum yeset awa negergin. Mm. Basically, pretty much right, that translation pretty much is, is spot on. But um, one who doubts. It's like almost disputing. It's like some of, some of the brothers were, and, and sisters sometimes. Sometimes I think we all go through this, and one who is a, a little more firm in faith. And as you get firmer in faith, you're going to find that as you're speaking to other brothers and sisters sometimes, you're going to see yourself. And only one, it's like oh, if you take that beam out your own eye, then you truly can see that spot. And many times one only has that spot of doubting. They might know the Bible, they, they love God, they read the Word, they accept Christ, but they still got some doubt. You understand? Now, the reasons for that doubt might be different in everyone, or really it is slightly different or nuanced in everyone's case. But if one understands this particular word right here and then see, sees what happens in their own um, walk in life, like I just, I'm just thinking about this right here in His Majesty's um, his Majesty's teaching, where His Majesty actually, um, where He speaks about um, spirituality, and He's speaking about um, Christ, and He says something very interesting right here that I begin to see, I begin to think about. Um, yes, in where His Majesty speaks on religion, and he, he he says something that sounds very much close or like He says, however wise or however mighty a person may be, he is like a ship without a rudder. If I rudder, if he is without God, 
a rudderless ship is at the mercy of the waves and the wind drifts wherever they take it, and if there arises a whirlwind, I mean a real bad situation, you understand, it is smashed against the rocks and becomes as if it has never existed. See, even we have this spot, this little bit of doubt, it might not be seem so bad, really, because I just doubt a little bit, but that's a whirlwind hasn't come just yet. You see, when that whirlwind comes, then the smashing against the rocks comes. So what's the, you know, what's the um, fitchy? What's the solution? What's the, what's the key to this, right? Mekfetcha, right? How do, how do we open up the real way out of this? It is our firm belief, he says, or imnet, it is our firm faith that a soul, a soul without Christ, you understand, a soul without Christos, without the Moshiach, you understand, the Mashiach, is bound to meet with no better fate, period. The love shown by our God, by Ha Elohim, you understand, to mankind, to humanity, should constrain all of us who are followers of disciples and disciples of Christ. Now, what is Matthew saying right here? Does this mean that, that his majesty is a follower and disciple of Christ? If his majesty can say that and we call ourselves a Rastafari, you should be ashamed of yourself to turn your back and deny that. Point blank. You understand? Point blank. You understand? And no blink. Point blank. He said we should do all in our power to see to it that what? That just reggae music is carried? That ice gold and green is carried? No. He says we should do all in our power to see to it that the message of salvation is carried to those of our fellows. Did he say just fellow Africans? Does he say um, um, fellow Ethiopians? They say fellow Jamaicans, fellow African Americans? No, 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 no. He's saying to our fellows, to, to others who have not had the benefit of hearing the good news. So you see how important the, the Wengil, you understand, or the good news of his majesty, you understand, is to I and I, especially to I and I. You understand? In a sense, we are really the last voice of God to this world that is, that, that is, that is hedging on the precipice. I mean, you know, um, you could believe it, you could accept it, you don't have to accept it, but really think about it. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Verse 7. Verse 7 and 8, it says, For now the one who is tossed, the, the one who, who, who wavers, he that, 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 that wavereth, or he that doubteth, or in a sense almost he that's disputeth, you know saying, well, let me put an argument to you. I mean, did you not hear what Matthew just said? Did you say you're Rastafari? Yes, I'm a Rastafari. Well, don't you hear what? Well, but I've even heard some, some jokers, crack smokers, um, on a spiritual level, crack smoking, saying that, well, I'm a Rasta, and I'm a Rastafari, but I don't, I don't, not, not, not in the Hollis Lassie. I don't check for how, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of dodo, what kind of dodo bird, what, what kind of, what kind of crap is that? So you stealing our name, you know what I'm saying, our good new name, you know what I'm saying, and run, you already, you already know, what, this is not our point, but that one who wavers, right, is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. It says in verse 7, for let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. Now, somebody might say, well, I've doubted the Lord. I got something. What was it of the Lord? You know what I'm saying? I mean, really? Really now? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And it's not just saying man, the male, but a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. You remember the yay yay and the nay nay? You, you, you remember that, that that point right there? And we still haven't touched on vows just yet from Hebrews. I mean, from um from um uh, numbers or read the Chulque or the or the Hebrew book of the Midbar just yet, because remember the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. But what we need is a revelation. You understand? Because there's too much willful or ignorant blindness going around, and we who say we see, we need to just check out, you understand, whether it confirms his word in spirit and in truth. So to the double-minded man, right, is unstable in all his ways, it says, Who let, shulet or who let, asab, lalo, 
be men gedum hulu lemia wala wul lezia so kageta zen anda chindia gain i i i yim masalo i yim salo anda chindia gain i yim salo in other words, that one should not even pretend to themselves that you're going to get anything from Gita, that you don't get anything from the Lord, from the Master. So this teaching double-mindedness, but still the connection, in a sense, um, didn't really fully, you know, saying fully, what is the yay, yay, nay, nay? You know when somebody says to you, um, well, yes and no, excuse me? Well, yes and no. Well, like, maybe. Well, like, yes and no. That's, that's an example of Christ is saying. That's when the evil one can come in. You know what I'm saying? That's when the evil one, well, yes, uh, no, like, iffy, whiffy, you know what I mean? Is that yay? Is it, is it yes, yes? I mean, is it, is it yes? It's better if one says, I don't know. Let me think about it for a moment. You know, really think about it. Instead of, well, yes and no. And, and you say to some people, well, it's not yes and it's either yes or no. Well, it's really yes and no. It's really yes and And let me explain to you, no, 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 maybe, maybe not. You know, because now you want to put this kind of yes and no and this kind of doubt. Is it yes or is it no? It can't be. You know what I'm saying right here? So Christ is saying that whatever is more than that, he's really showing where this double-mindedness, how double-mindedness kind of gets started. You understand? It's like yes, yes is saying affirmation, affirmation. No, he didn't say yes and no. He said yes, yes, and I tell him, I tell him, or no, no. I won, I won, I tell him, I tell him. You understand? So 